My university year is over and I'm officially on summer break. Of course, like most people, I don't really have a true summer break like we used to back in school. I'll spend July working a summer job back at my parents' place, and in June, even though I do spend a lot of time doing leisurely fun stuff, the idea is that I'll finish a short film project that I've been working on for a long time. So I thought this would be a good time to make a vlog talking about my movie projects. I'd probably like to talk about more than I can fit in just one video, so maybe I'll make it a series. I'll link the videos that I talk about in the description down below, but uh, none of them is actually any good at all, so like, don't watch them. My name is Larben, and I'm here to show what my old film teacher used to call Kula Bala Greyer. Pra trazer brasilidade, vem cantar com vigor, dando a oportunidade de festejar. My filmmaking journey started in high school when I was 16, and Joachim was with me from the start. I should also mention Malin Torstensson and Emily Berglund, who were also involved in many of the projects we did during this time. So we had a couple of filmmaking courses where we learned the basics of uh, dramaturgy and uh, cinematography, and from the beginning we had this urge to break the rules and try new things. For instance, we had the idea to have an object as the main character, instead of an actual character. So we made a short film that we called Break My Chain, after a prominent song we used in the film, and it showed the journey of a pencil that was picked up and then dropped again over and over by different people. At a point in the beginning of the film, the pencil is broken in half, and then those two pieces go their separate ways, until they finally end up with the same person in the end, who tapes them back together. She then hands the pencil over to the guy who had it in the beginning of the movie, and that kind of creates a time loop where you're not really sure what came first, the pencil or the egg. I remember when we came up with that idea, we, we had most of the film written out, we were just scratching our heads about a way to close it, and when we came up with the time loop idea, we were basically like jumping up and down in the classroom with excitement over how great we thought this idea was. Now of course, this was one of our first films, so the result isn't exactly worth seeing, but I like the concept, I even like the time loop thing. But this kind of film is all about seeing little interesting pieces of people's lives and telling some kind of story about those people and how their lives interact because they all come in contact with this small, seemingly meaningless thing. But then of course you'd actually have to write those characters and make them interesting. And the people in our film, they weren't interesting at all. So basically we had more concept than execution of this project. But it was a great experience though, of course. We made a bunch of other little projects, like a music video where the most memorable aspect was that we managed to hide a dildo in every shot. Or a film shot entirely on green screen where all the characters are silhouettes living in a side-scrolling 2D world. We never finished that one. I guess it was too much editing work. At least it spawned a few inside jokes. Get up, stay up, jump, stand up, for go. Stand up, it's CFF. In our last year of high school, we made our first attempt at visual effects using After Effects. We constructed a cliched story outline for some superhero action movie, and then we made a fake trailer for that movie using as many VFX techniques as we could most of which were taken from tutorials on videocopilot.com. We worked harder on this than we had ever worked before, and I think this was the time when we started spending all our free time working and then treating our regular school hours as some kind of break time. We finished the trailer just past midnight on my birthday, which was the same day as our end of term ceremony and the start of the winter break. Students were allowed to submit their own film projects to be shown at this gathering, but that deadline was long past. Nevertheless, I sneaked around during the ceremony when things were going on on the stage. I talked to supervising teachers, a bunch of other people, and then eventually the person who operated the computer where they showed video from. And then it was a dance of USB sticks and progress bars before I could finally sit down at the front row and relax. By that time, I had missed most of the show, and our video was shown almost immediately when I sat down. Now, if you watch the trailer, like anything old that somebody did in the beginning of their learning, it's not actually very good. But the standards in our high school wasn't very high either. 
This was the moment when we established our place as the big fish in the small bowl. The entire hall erupted in applause and cheering, and I was sitting there in the front row, feeling like there was a physical storm actually blowing me forwards. On my birthday at the start of winter break, I was feeling pretty good. The next project we did reaffirmed our status as the cool kids in the playground, and it was the last thing we did before we graduated high school. During all of our time together, we had assembled a massive collection of in-jokes and stupid little ideas for funny characters to make film scenes with. As our last project, we assembled all these ideas in a comedy short film we called Cut Cut Cut. It's basically a Monty Python-style skit collection, with really loose transitions from each skit to the next scene. We introduce a bunch of characters that all basically have a catchphrase each that they say, and that catchphrase completely defines their personality. We show these characters in a bunch of supposedly funny situations, and then we have them overlap into each other's scenes, and at the end, we basically bring them all together for a crescendo of bullshit. <laughs> Everything about this, from the title to the shallow characters, is ridiculously stupid. And looking back at it, very few of the jokes actually work. But it was a big deal to us at the time. We won a bunch of awards at our school's own little version of the Oscars, and everybody we knew saw the movie. Eventually it seemed to me like everybody in town that was around our age had seen this movie, because friends of friends like started recognizing me for it. So that was cool, but as I said, it was very much a big fish in a small bowl situation. The best thing that came of it was probably that we started hanging out with Robin. Robin had been in the class next to us for all this time, but we had pretty much kept to our separate cliques until we asked him if he wanted to make this film with us, which apparently was cool because apparently he didn't have much to do or something. This was also the start of the long-standing tradition of Robin sacrificing his physical well-being for the sake of the art. Jag tar den! Så jag vart någonting. Trodde inte vilket fint snitt det vart i skjortan också. Det vart ju hur snyggt som helst. Jag måste hitta, hitta vad det var som gjorde det. Jävlar. Kolla, alltså kolla. Det här är ju inte backen som har gjort det här. Nej. Det där snittet, det måste ju fan vara någonting. Fan måste ha varit den här. Yeah, blah. That project concluded our high school period of filmmaking, and that concludes this video. There's a lot of memories connected to this old stuff, and if you're someone who were with us at the time, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next week. Passado